Hello, Charlie. Welcome to All Ears English. How are you today? Hello, Lindsay. Yes, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I was trying to think of what to say at the beginning, and I thought, <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be terrible if I said all eyes English? Oh, that's of good. All that's ears good. English. And then I thought, um, maybe that could be a YouTube channel for you. That's not a bad idea. We'll look into that, Charlie. I love it. <laughs> Guys, today is going to be fun. I have Charlie Baxter on the show. Charlie is the host and creator of the British English Podcast and Academy. It looks like you have a lot of great courses going on over there, Charlie, and your podcast is fantastic. He's been on YouTube as an English teacher since 2016. So again, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a lovely summary. Yeah, I've been working hard for the last couple of years on the podcast and the Academy. Um, yeah, built an app for it now. So it's, yes. it's super streamlined and a lot of online courses for people to enjoy and vocabulary. I think I counted about 6,000 phrases have been defined in the last year and a half. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. 6,000 phrases. I love it. So guys, we want to encourage you to go over and check out Charlie's work. But first, we're going to talk today about creativity and how our listeners can reconnect. In my opinion, uh, I think we're all creative as kids, right? When we're born, we're creative, we're kids, because there's nothing hindering us. There's no one saying that's wrong or, you know, that's weird, right? But at some point we do kind of lose a little bit of that creativity. So today's all about reconnecting with that. Charlie, can you tell me about a time when you've reconnected with that sense of creativity yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. It's happened recently for me. So it's, um, it's something that I think about a lot. And uh, we might end with a couple of tips for you guys about how to get into creativity. But yes. to go back a little bit, um, I feel like I wasn't really doing things that I was passionate about for a while as I was growing up and learning about life for myself. And I wasn't able to um, get into a state of creativity very often. And as I said, recently, I have been able to acquire um, you know, these, these modes of being in, in creative flow. Yeah. So it, it's, it's made me realize that it's, it's directly related for me to passion and being ha almost having a purpose. It sounds right. cheesy for a British person to admit that. Does but, it? That's uh, so funny. Okay. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if, if I feel like I've got a purpose and um, I'm passionate about what I'm doing, I feel like I can be creative. So yeah, going back to, um, a moment in time mm -hmm. um, when I was um, when I was first introduced to doing things that I enjoyed I, I didn't quite realize at the time what those things were and like for example my father he um, he didn't force me but he encouraged me to be a a, um, a cricket coach oh cool, and cool at the age of 16 I got a qualification and I was able to coach people how to play cricket and then a couple of years later, it dawned on me that I don't actually like cricket. Um, <laughs> I find it quite boring. And apologies to those cricket fans out there. But um, yeah, I, I found it quite boring. But I, what I realized I did like from that was the idea of helping somebody get better at the technique. Yes. And it was incredibly satisfying. I'm sure you've experienced this many times yes. yourself. Yep. Um, yes. So I, I, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Keep going, Charlie. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I took that little nugget and then there was another moment when I went to um, Uganda, actually, and uh, I was doing a volunteer program and it was all quite unorganized or disorganized. And uh, we were in the classroom and I was being an assistant to the English teacher. And I was huh. just helping a couple of the kids work out their their English problems. Yeah. And yeah, those moments kind yeah. of clicked with me that it, it really does um mean something when when you're connected to an idea that you enjoy something that you actually enjoy doing and uh yeah there was a, a variety of things growing up like um recently I've started doing voiceover work oh cool cool yeah and I realized that what I like in that is the challenge of cr um giving over emotions of that of that character almost mm -hmm. a bit, I guess like acting, but you know, it's not, right. not professional Hollywood stuff, but yeah, there's moments throughout my career that I've realized, Oh, I like that bit. I like that bit. And I like that bit. Yes. And then 
trying to put them all together yep. is is the challenge, I guess. And and I've kind of managed to do some of that right now. And as I said, it's it's allowing me to be in a creative zone, which is really exciting. It's absolutely exciting. I love it. So for our listeners, guys, you know what Charlie is saying here. I love this because it's not like all of a sudden one moment we're going to find that dream job or that dream hobby that is our true creative passion. We're going to take pieces of what worked well before. Right. And when I think about your example, it makes sense for my life too. Right. I coach tennis. I've done different things. I taught English abroad, these things. I also pulled out these things, the coaching, the development of people, you know, the, the physical aspect, the performance aspect. I love it. So guys think about what you have done in the past and what did you love and what can you pull into your next creative passion? So good. Okay. So now I think we've gotten our listeners ready and excited. I actually do have just one quick question. Why is it weird as a British person to say you found your purpose? (laughs) I I can't not (laughs) ask that. I just have to ask that real quick. (laughs) I guess it comes from, um, an identity that British people hold on to as being stoic. Yeah. Okay. Stoicism encourages a lack of emotion. Okay. And being overly emotive yeah. does make us think of our cousins across the pond. We, <laughs> we think of Americans <laughs> and I love America for it. You've brought so yes. much fantastic entertainment to the world for that reason. But yeah, yeah. British people, I think if you're in a pub and you're over the top, someone might sort of be like, all right, mate, shut up. Come on, yeah. pipe down. Yeah. That was my sense, but I just wanted to hear that from you because it is really interesting how we do have different attitudes towards being animated, you know, having that, that idea of a purpose, but I love that you're kind of identifying yours and you're going for it because we talk about that a lot on the show. We, we need a little something more in our daily lives as human beings to what we're doing. We need to be doing it for someone or for something, right? So now I think our listeners are ready for your three tips. Charlie, how can we reconnect with our creativity in life and as language learners? What would you say? Okay. So first tip I think is to, well, you, you actually touched on it earlier, how we are creative as kids, aren't we? We we all know how to play and there's no, well, there might be a few, but there's not many kids that look at a toy and think, well, how am I going to get into a creative flow here they (laughs) just do it it's just innate and I think there's um, a famous study that was brought to my attention by a guy called Sir Ken Robinson have you heard of no I haven't I haven't no so he he was a um an education sort of he he transformed education in many ways or Mm. has uh, attempted to over the last two or three decades he sadly Mm. passed away but um he did a TED talk on um finding your element and he Ooh. wrote a couple of books on finding your element, basically element for the, for the sake of time. It kind of means passion right now. Yeah, sure. Finding um, passionate things in your life. And um, he, he said about a study that was called the paperclip study. Hmm. The paperclip study is uh, basically giving somebody a paperclip yeah. and saying how many ways you could you reuse this item in life. Oh. Ooh, okay. And he gave he gave it to five year olds or the study. They gave it to five year olds, ten year olds, fifteen year olds, and adults. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and the five year olds beat the it adults. It was astounding. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the five year olds beat the adults hands down. So I think, um, yeah, they were saying like two percent of adults can think creatively in this sense. Um, as opposed to 98% of five-year-olds think of it, you know, we, we're so constrained by all of the things in, in education that tell us we've got to do it like this, haven't we? Aren't we? So. so, Sure. We are. Yes. hundred percent. So children, children have this ability to look at an object and not have any boundaries. And that's, that's where play can come in. So yeah. Tip number one is to um, not think of creativity as binary in the sense of, I have it or I don't have it Mm. because I think we can both agree that mainstream media encourages us to think of creativity is for those who are on stage, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. have a paintbrush in their hand, 
or starving artist. Y- right. Yes. yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And if if that is commercially viable, yeah. then you are a successful creative person. Yeah. And if you're not, you're not creative. And that's yeah. kind of what been told over time. Okay. So I just want to make the point that we are all creative in our own way, but we just need to, you know, tap into it in yes. ways that we forget. Yeah, I love the idea that you know, this was with you from from your childhood society kind of took it out of you in a way, but it's still there and you can come back to it. So you guys may be thinking that you're not creative. That's Charlie's first tip, right? Don't think that way. It's not binary, right? We all can uncover that and find that. So good. I love it. What would be the second tip for our listeners? Absolutely. Yeah. So when I say about creativity, um, very often people notice time is going past very quickly when they're being creative. Yes. Um, they're almost not aware of it. They're not aware that time is going past and, and people forget to do the, the three essential things in life of eat, right. sleep and shower. <laughs> and um, that is what they call a state of flow. When, yes. when you're in a state of flow, you're mm-hmm. able to, you know, focus entirely on the thing at hand and, and, and not, cons- not see it as work if you're relating it to, you know, right. a job or something like that. Yes. So I, I imagine you find a state of flow in your job. Oh, in podcasting. That is where I find. So for All Ears English, we do a lot of things. Um, but for me, podcasting and, and teaching as well. But for me, the biggest thing is just right here, right now, being on the mic with Michelle, with Aubrey, and just being in it is where I find my flow. Yeah. For sure. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I heard that um, to, uh, to achieve a state of flow, we're going to get to tip th- three in a second, um, <laughs> which is about how to tap into your passions. But to achieve a state of flow, it's good to be doing something that you're passionate about. Yeah. Have um, the basics covered of, you know, have slept enough, potentially exercise to keep the positive hormones flowing through you. Um, meditate for five minutes at the bookends of the day and, uh, you know, have, have the basic things like not think about food, not be hungry, not be full, um, have those basics in line, Mm. be doing something passionate that you, you enjoy. And the other thing to think in, think about is, um, doing something that is both challenging and yet balanced between you are, you feel in control. So it's like a, a balance between chaos and order. Right. Or, or a certain level of mastery that you have and a certain amount of challenge, right? This reminds yeah. me a lot of, have you read the book, the famous book, uh, by me, high chick sent me high, right. He wrote about flow. Um, it's very fit. Yeah. And that's what he said, right. That's how he defined it as being like a place where you're in the middle between complete mastery and, you know, being a novice and, and learning it like you're just you're still being challenged but you could do it to a certain extent right yeah yeah yes. i haven't heard of, i haven't read that book but i've probably heard people quoting that that oh, message because yeah. no question yeah that no is question. that is exactly yes. yeah what i've heard yeah okay. nice so your suggestion here is we need to set up the conditions right eat sleep meditate be ready uh have our basic needs met and be participating in something that we are somewhat passionate about and at that point, we could enter into a flow state. Is that right? That's right. And adding on one more, which is a bit harder to do, but don't think about entering a state of flow or creativity. As I said about the yeah, kid. Yeah, don't think about it. Yeah. The yeah. kid doesn't look at a toy and think, right, right. I'm going to get into a state of flow right now. Yes. It's, it's, it's looking at it in a, an innocent way to, to instigate play. And then that will lead to state of flow. Yeah. It's the same in meditation, right? Cause I meditate. You can't say now I'm going to steady my mind, right? As soon as you're doing that, you're out of the steady mind state, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? You're not meditating anymore. Okay. So you, it's kind of a, it's a letting go, isn't it? Charlie? Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Love yeah. it. Let's move on to your next tip here, Charlie. So in terms of what we've learned so far with these first two, it sounds like we want to apply this a little bit to language learning for our listeners or just life in general. What would you recommend? Most definitely. Yeah. Uh, the reason I, I wanted to talk about this particularly was because 
I've been struggling with my Spanish studies. Yeah. And only recently have, has it dawned on me that, you know, being in a state of flow helps me not feel lazy and feel productive. Okay. And with my Spanish studies, I've always felt like it's an uphill struggle or, mm. you know, a battle to, to get through it. And I've just put myself into these moments of things that I find passionate or yeah. I am passionate about and put it towards Spanish studying. And it's amazing. It makes me feel like I'm in that state of flow. I'm, I'm playing and wow. it's increased my motivation tenfold with the idea of going to my studies in Spanish. Like I, I want to go to it now. So, yeah. So okay. that's why it's big. Um, so step one for this activity that I'm going to call um, the creative process for language learning. Mm -hmm. You can tell I've just made that up. But it's, <laughs> it's from um, that guy, Sir Ken Robinson. He okay. created a couple of exercises in uh, finding your element. And one of those ex exercises I've tweaked a little bit. So here we go. So step one, you want to write a list mm -hmm. of all of the activities that you do in your life. All right. Okay. okay. Yes. So from like walking the dog, uh, making coffee, having mm -hmm. breakfast, driving to work, all of those menial things, write them all down. Perfect. And if you don't do have a long list, you can think of what you've done in the past and yes. maybe even what you want to do in the future or what you think you might be doing in the future. Yep. So writing all of those down and then get with a highlighter, you want to um, not use the highlighters yet. I've forgotten a step. A, a step. So <laughs> look at that acti those activities and then have a think about what skill is used most in that activity. For example, for me making coffee, I need to, uh, I think that the hardest thing is finding the right flavor bean, yeah. finding the right milk uh -huh. and getting the temperature exact. So okay. it's like pulling on multiple things yeah. and, and using a skill set of basically choice. Yeah, lots of different choices to to come to a specific point where I'm happy with that product. Another one I thought of was the, the taking the dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. So for that, I was struggling. I was really struggling. I was like, what skill is involved with taking a dog for a walk? Uh -huh. But really, I'm constantly thinking about what dogs are friendly and what dogs are unfriendly to my dog. So sure. I'm constantly mm -hmm. reading body language. Yes. Yes. OK, so I took that skill. And then you want to put those skills into a good at, not so good at, bad at kind of column. Right. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. And then so you're left with a column on the left of skills that you're good at. Mm -hmm. Then I want you to highlight them if you if you like, don't mind and don't like. OK. OK. All right. And the ones that you're left with that are in the like highlight. Yes are areas that you're likely to find a state of flow because you've got that balance of you're interested in it and you're good at it. So okay. it's mm -hmm. more likely that you're motivated to do it and right. that you've still got the skill set for it. So for example, with that dog one, I, I realized that I, I like reading body language. So an exercise that I applied to my Spanish studies was going to a cafe and just being aware of how people are engaging with each other just through their body language. Yep. Learn a few phrases in Spanish around body language yes. and write some creative examples about what they're displaying in an emotive way. Ah, so yeah, that makes total sense. So I like it. So the tip here is we are taking what we do naturally and we enjoy naturally doing as it applies to other things like walking the dog, making coffee and identifying that skill and then bringing that into our language learning, right? And making that be the activity that we're doing. And you're using that to get to the flow state, right, Charlie? Exactly, exactly, Perfect. yeah. All right, good. So guys, you have heard the steps. This is how you do it, right? Make that extra effort to get into the flow state as you're studying English or any language and you will get there faster. I love it, Charlie. Uh, thank you for coming on the show today. Can you let our listeners know where to find you online, how to find your podcast? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lindsay. It's been an honor. 
Um, so guys, if you wanted to listen to me a bit more, it's uh, the British English Podcast or the website is thebritishenglishpodcast.com. Yes, perfect. We love it. All right. We'd love to have you on the show again another time, Charlie. I would like to chat longer, but can't do it. Got to finish up today. Thanks so much and have a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.